experience God in a new way. Begin to get out of your comfort zone. Do something different that you've never done before. If you want to see different results, do something new here tonight and just praise God in a way that you've never praised him before and he will begin to work in your life as he's never worked before. Let's worship God here tonight with everything in our hearts because God has given us everything, so we need to give everything back to him. Let's worship God here tonight. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. 
worthy, the Lord is worthy. Uh, and to my end, we got a right to shake the foundations of praise. Glory, glory, hallelujah. This is what we've come to do. Tear down strongholds, break the chains. By the devil in Jesus' name. Uh, and to my end, we got a right to shake the foundations with praise.
tonight and there's several praise God that are looking this way we want to continue to pray for brother Mark Taggart that the Lord would continue to touch his leg I think yesterday was a better today better day and so we're asking that God just keep touching him uh, please continue to pray for sister Kyla Beekman uh, just so that you know we did get a report just a little bit ago she was tested for the coronavirus and she tested positive and so, what that means is that she's getting better now, praise God. And so, I spoke to her this morning, and uh, she is uh, she's doing better. Let's just put it that way. So, we're thankful for that. Amen. And so, she hasn't been around anybody for two weeks. So, that's a good thing. So, that's the, uh, the time period. So, we need to pray for her, and God is, God is touching her, and, and uh, your prayers are working. So we're thankful for that, and uh, just asking God to touch. She wanted her church family to know, and so that we would be praying. And so, we know a God that's great, big, and strong. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I think it's time for praise break. We need to worship Him. Praise God. Thank Him for being on the throne. Pray for Brother Allen and Brother Clayton as well that God would just touch them and keep him from it. Amen. And so place where she works uh, there's a lot of exposure and uh, God is touching her I remember brother and sister Kelly uh, sister Joanne was in the hospital this last week let's continue to pray for her pray for sister Marguerite sister Sandy Rusnick as well not feeling well uh, pray for sister Rhonda Murnahan that God would touch her sister Adams is good to see her here tonight she underwent a test the other day and so we'll we're just going to trust God. God's in control. Is it that right? Yeah. Brother Potts. Good to see Brother Potts. Brother Potts is having the, uh, they're going to supposed to check his fistula tomorrow and then possibly check on getting these other tubes out. But I, I see strength in Brother Potts. And that's what I'm praying into his body and into his life. Amen. As well as everyone else. Uh, continue to pray for Sister Tammy. It was good to see her here in the house of the Lord this morning. It's so good to hear her testimony. Amen. And to know what God has done in her life. Amen. We want to pray for Jonathan Perry. These are friends of ours uh, from Illinois. Uh, Jonathan has COVID-19 and he is in the hospital. Uh, he's not been doing very well, but he has made a turn to do better. And so he's not on a ventilator or anything, but uh, these folks are precious to us. We've known them. My wife has known uh, Sister Bria for many, many years. And in fact, she was a part of our wedding. Wasn't she? She was... <laughs> My daughter was a part of her wedding. Let's put it that way. There we go. Uh, remember Brother Brett? Brother Brett texted me when he arrived in St. Louis. And so he is there, and uh, he's all ready for uh, his training. And then Deidre White. This is Sister Marilyn's um, employer, Sister Marilyn Sadler's employer. And so she's very sick in the hospital. She has had blood clots in her lungs. And so... It's going to be a long recovery for her. At least that's what their expectations is. Are there any other requests that you'd like to make known? Anything serious? Yes, brother. Family. All right. Anybody else? Sister Potts. Very special, unspoken need. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Yes.
Amen. So keep that in thoughts. Uh, uh, Lahan is supposed to be baptized tomorrow, and that'll be a great, great event. If you want to come and be a part of that, that'll be right around 8 o'clock. And so we'll be excited to see that happen. Praise God. Let's join together Please right pray now. Pray for VBS. I'm sorry? Pray for VBS. Pray for the VBS as well. We've got about 24, 25 kids. That's pretty good. Amen. With everything that's going on. So, amen. Let's join together. I know we all believe in prayer. But would you join together right now? The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So three things there. Effectual, fervent, and righteous. And so why don't we right now, let's just pray. Ask God to forgive us of any sin. Get all that out of the way. And then let's pray and believe. If you'd like to be anointed, please come up around the front. We still believe in that, don't we? Amen. Let's pray right now. Dear God, we call on your name right now. Lord Jesus, you are on the throne, and God, we just give you praise. We give you glory right now, and we're asking for your help, Lord. God, you see Sister Kyla, Lord, and all that's going on in her life, her body, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name right now, God, that you would move and minister to her. Lord, touch Brother Mark, Lord, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, you are the great healer, Lord. We pray for Clayton, and we pray, Lord, God, that you would touch on Brother Allen, Lord, moving his life, Lord. We pray, Jesus, that you would touch Sister Joanne and Brother Ron, Lord. We're asking you to move their behalf, Lord. God, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would touch Sister June Perry, God, that you would touch and move in her life, God, as well. Lord, we're praying, God, for our elders, Lord Jesus. Uh, Sister Mary, work, Lord. We're praying, God, that you would touch Sister... Uh, Sandy Rusnick, Lord, Sister Rhonda Murnahan, Lord, you know the needs, God, Lord, as they are represented here tonight, God. In Jesus' name, we call on you, Lord, and God, we give you praise, Lord. You are mighty and strong, Lord, and Jesus, when these things come against us, uh, Lord, we call on your name, Lord, because when the enemy comes in like a flood, Lord, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against it. Uh, God, right now, Lord, we just call on your name, Lord. We're trusting in you. We're believing in you. We're pleading the blood of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, the cross of Calvary, Lord, where all things, Lord, were met, all things were settled, Lord, on Calvary, we're praying for it right now, Lord, touch Sister Adams, Lord, touch her body, God, move in her, Lord, I pray it right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we come against every sickness, Lord, we come against every disease, Lord, we call on your name right now, Almighty God, Almighty God, Almighty God, greater is he that is in us and he that is in the world. Lord, you're mighty, you're strong, Lord. We praise your name and we thank you, Lord, tonight. God, for each of these needs, oh, Lord. Oh, God, oh, God, you will arise. You will arise and you will touch, God. I pray for Lacey, Lord, that you would move in her life, God. I pray, Lord, God, that you would move in Deidre's life, God, that you would heal her, Lord. The promises of your words say, Lord, that we don't have to wait for a natural healing, but, God, that we can depend on a supernatural healing. When the doctors say that things are dead, I know that, Lord, you're greater and, God, you're mightier, Lord, and that you can create a resurrection, Lord. God, a resurrection of things that have died. Lord, I pray it right now in the name of Jesus. I trust you, God. God, I implement the name of Jesus Christ. I call on your name, Lord. You're such a mighty God. Lord, you're the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, oh God. You are our Savior, our healer. Oh, tonight, God, we just praise you. We praise you, Lord, oh God, in Jesus' name right now. Touch your people. Touch your people, God. Let there be an anointing flow in this house tonight. Lord, I pray. God, let it fall, Lord. Let it fall on us, Lord. God, that we might receive, Lord, your touch, your glory, your power. God, there's nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. And while the world suffers, oh God, Lord, we have a reprieve, oh Lord. And the things, oh God, just like Egypt, Lord, when they were in Goshen, God, you protect us. You keep us safe. And Lord, we depend upon you for that today. Oh Lord, we glorify your name. We glorify your name. Let's give him another hand of praise right now. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. I send the ushers to come right now to wait upon us. Amen. For this evening's offering, asking God to just have his way as they're coming. Uh, again, just a reminder for VBS tomorrow, uh, 24, 25 kids. There'll probably be some come in uh, at the last moment, and uh, we'll be thankful for that. We want to reach as many children as we can this week. Brother and Sister Merriman will be arriving tomorrow. They have been up in northern Ohio and uh, they've been doing a work for God. These folks have been chomping at the bit. We need to keep them on the field. We need to keep them busy for children to receive the Holy Ghost. Doesn't matter what this other stuff's going on. People can keep on getting the Holy Ghost, amen, while everything's going on. You know that? God is still mighty. God hasn't stopped one thing. He's still in the soul-saving business. The soul-saving business has not stopped, amen, because of all of these things that have gone on. It doesn't matter, amen, who says what. God is still greater. His voice is stronger, amen. When he speaks, miraculous things happen. When, when man speaks, all that happens is he reports information. He can report what God does, and that's what we need to do, amen. There's a song that says, whose report will you believe? I will re believe the report of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I will. How about you? Why don't we join together and give the Lord a hand of praise? Lord, we believe your report. We believe you're on the throne. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So we'll begin tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. We will be having Bible uh, vacation Bible school all week this week. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to be praying with kids. So that means we will not be having our regular uh, Wednesday night Bible study, but we will be here working with the children. We want to see these children get the Holy Ghost. Amen. We want to see them get baptized. We want to see their moms or dads or grandmas or grandpas get baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what this church is here for. It is here, amen, to see us, to have an environment, to reach out to other people, amen, to see them saved. Man, this ain't just a this ain't just a uh, maintenance program. Hello, somebody. This ain't just a maintenance program. This ain't Jenny Craig. This ain't any of those other things that are just out there to keep us in good shape and looking good. Y'all look really good tonight. But let me tell you something. God wants to use you to reach a soul. God wants to use you to reach somebody. Amen. And to change their destiny. Praise God. Praise God. Remember next Sunday, amen, we'll be uh, back in service and expecting God to do great and mighty things. Hallelujah. I'm glad that I know who he is. I'm glad for the day that I found out that Jesus was God Almighty and that there's only one God and his name is Jesus. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. There was one, there is one God, amen, and one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. I'm glad I know him today. How about you? There's a preach in the house tonight. I feel it. I feel it tonight. Praise God. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give and we pray, Lord, that you would bless the gift and the giver and, Lord, that you would use it to the upbuilding of of your kingdom and Lord God that you would see many souls saved many souls reached Lord as a result God of this church God and this offering we're about to receive right now in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen God bless you ushers as you go right now we're going to continue to worship the Lord amen in Jesus name
presence is heaven to me, Jesus. Your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Your presence, Lord. I need it tonight, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Nobody like you. Matchless love and beauty in this world. Yes, Tim. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're a cup that won't run dry. Let's sing it to the moon. Your presence is Treasure of my heart and of my soul. 
the moment we're waiting for. The moment that I see your face betrayed. Oh, how we long, we long. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, nothing, Lord. But Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. No, Lord, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're Nothing in this world will satisfy me like you, Lord. Nothing, Jesus, like your presence, Lord. Satisfy her. He satisfied the longing soul with goodness tonight. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Lord, hear the cry of our heart, God. Your presence, Lord, it means everything to me, Jesus. We worship you tonight. We worship you, oh God. We praise you in this house, Lord. In Jesus' name, would you clap your hands one more time unto God? Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Amen. I want you to look around and find somebody to wave at. You haven't waved at tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good to see all of you here. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad I know Jesus is on the throne. Praise God. So many things happening in this world. But praise God, I'm glad I know that Jesus is on the throne. Praise the Lord. Amen. Asking Brother Michael to come minister the word of the Lord tonight while he's coming. Praise God. Uh, just please keep the, the Vacation Bible School in your prayers. And I know that God is going to touch us and going to help us. Amen. Let's all stand. Amen. In honor of the word of God. Hallelujah. And let's worship the Lord. How many is going to help him preach tonight? Amen. God bless you. Brother Michael, come minister the things of God. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. His presence is heaven to us. Oh, man, until that glorious day. Hallelujah. The Lord returns, takes his church back to, up to heaven. And we hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Walk through those gates on those streets paved of gold that are worthless up there. Man, what a day. But while we're here on this earth, just to be in His presence, just to be in His presence, to feel Him moving, to feel Him working among us. Man, wow. To feel His presence, His Spirit just pour down to feel that rain that we sang about just a few minutes ago. The rain of the, the Lord. His spirit, His presence just raining down. Man. Mm. Amen. Wow, what a privilege. Amen. Makes you think. As we were singing that song, I just couldn't help but think, man, just to listen to the sound of the Lord moving and working listening to people worshiping, listening to uh, what God's doing in somebody's life at the moment when they have their hands lifted up, tears running down their faces. They're just surrendering it all to God and saying, God, do with me as you will. Whatever it is you want to do, God, move in my situation, move in whatever's going on in my life. Just move right now. I want your rain to fall down in my life. 
the sound of that rain. The sound of a pandemic can't compare to it. It can't drown it out. Come on, somebody needs to hear that right now. The, sa- the sound of life cannot drown out the sound of the abundance of rain that the Lord pours down upon us. It cannot drown out what God wants to do in your life. Amen. If you want to turn with me to John chapter 19, we're going to start reading at verse 14. John chapter 19, verse 14. Amen. Jesus name. John chapter 19 verse 14. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour and he saith unto the Jews, behold your king. Behold your king. And they cried out, away with him. Away with him. Crucify him. Kill him. We don't want him. We don't care about him. Adding a little bit of a, uh, emphasis to that. But Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? Do you really want me to kill this man who says he is the king of your people? That he says he is the chosen one, the Messiah, the one that will bring you out. You really want me to kill this man who has done nothing wrong? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And this is the scripture we're going to kind of focus on tonight a little bit. Verse 17, and he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. And he bearing his cross went forth. Amen. Let's pray that the Lord would have his way here tonight and that he would minister as he wants to tonight. Make yourself available to him tonight. Say, God, whatever it is you want to do here tonight, God, whatever it is you have here for me tonight, God, I pray that you would speak to me. God, I pray that you would anoint us tonight. God, that you would help us, O oh Lord, to, O oh Jesus, receive the word that you have for us tonight, that you would minister to the hearts and minds of those that are listening or watching or uh, here in this service tonight, that you would, O oh God, move upon us as only you can, God, that you would, O oh Lord Jesus, move and do the miraculous in our lives tonight. God, that you would help us, O oh Lord Jesus, to understand what it means to bear the cross and to follow after you, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Reading through the account of the crucifixion in any of the gospel books, there was nothing pretty about the events that happened that day. The day that Jesus was crucified, the day that he was killed brutally. The whole process of crucifixion, if you look at this process, was designed for torture instead of a quick death. Jesus was mocked, humiliated, and made to be lower than even the lowest of his own creation that he had robed himself in flesh to walk about, to walk among. Today, the cross is a symbol of faith, a symbol of faith in Jesus, a symbol of faith in Christ. People use it as a symbol of tradition, through tradition and symbolism. If we are not careful in our approach to the cross, it can quickly become nothing more than that, a symbol or a tradition. The cross is not something to be taken lightly. It's not something that we should just approach casually. It's not something that we just think about one time a year. It's something that we should always be thankful for. It should be something that we are always constantly thinking about and applying to our lives. It was a tool or an instrument that played a part in Jesus providing a way to cover the sins of all humanity. 
With that one cross, Jesus re, uh, removed the uh, need for an annual sacrifice. And instead he said, come unto me. Come straight to me. Bypass the, that old way and come straight to me. To ask me for forgiveness. Anytime you need it, any moment of any day, you don't have to wait for one specific day of every year. It's whenever you need it, come to me. You see, I'm thankful for the cross. I'm thankful there is a way for us to be forgiven for our sins, for the things that we've done in our lives that we're not proud of, that go against the word of God. Amen? Anybody else feel that way? I'm thankful that God did that for me. I'm thankful for the testimonies that are made possible because of of the cross and what transpired there that day. Hearing people's testimony, what God's brought them through, what God's kept them from, what God's done in their lives, seeing the miracles, the signs, the wonders. Oh, man, it'll blow you away. You see, a little bit ago, mentioned the sound of the rain, the outpouring, and that whatever's going on in the world, nothing can take away from the outpouring, the sound of the abundance of God's rain. Nothing can take away from that. And you, see, um, one thing that I've noticed in the past couple months, while the world's going crazy, God is pouring his spirit out upon all flesh. He is pouring out. He keeps doing miracles. He keeps doing signs. He keeps filling people with his spirit. He keeps driving people to repentance. He keeps telling people, come unto me, all you here who are weary, and I will give you rest. You see, God wants us to give him our cares. He wants, to give, uh, uh, he wants us to give him our burdens, our troubles, our everything that just wears us down day to day, and give it to him so he and help us. The reality of the cross is a hard concept for us to visualize or imagine accurately since it was a different period of time. I mean, thankfully, we've never really seen somebody crucified. But Jesus was beaten. He was whipped. He had pieces of his body taken from him. Blood poured out of him. A crown of thorns was pushed onto his head. Not just placed, it was pushed so that it stuck into his face. He was made a public mockery as he was made to carry a cross towards the place where he would be killed. Historically, the person being crucified would carry the cross beam that made the T of their cross that they would be crucified on. This single piece weighed approximately 100 pounds. And as I started to look more into uh, the crucifixion and uh, how the Romans carried these things out during that time period, the distance they would have to carry their cross varied from half to one and a half miles. They would have to carry a hundred pounds of wood that distance, from anywhere from a half mile to a mile and a half. And in the condition Jesus was in, it's no wonder why they had to get another man to carry that for him. That's a long distance to carry anything, never mind a hundred pounds of wood. Even a five pound weight at that distance would feel much heavier than five pounds it was. A 100-pound beam of wood was going to be impossible to carry in the condition that Jesus was in physically. Simon, the man from the crowd that the soldiers persuaded or told to, hey, you come here right now. Carry this, carry this to where we're going. We know the rest of the story. We've heard it. Even if you've been in church one service, you've probably heard it. Jesus was nailed to the cross. There were two thieves, one on each, each side of him. He was given vinegar to drink. He was made a mockery. Um, he was stabbed with a spear. He died that day on the cross. So, and as his 
mom was watching, his cl uh, close friends and his disciples were watching, sobbing. They had been told, Jesus had even told them, I'll rise again, I'll be back. Don't be afraid. But they were still sad. Maybe there was a little bit of doubt. Maybe there was a little bit of hesitation. I don't, I don't know how anybody can come back from that. Matthew 16, verse 24 through 26 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If you want to come after Jesus, if you want to follow after Jesus, he says this, if you want to come after me, you need to deny yourself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Here Jesus is saying something so simple. Follow me. In order to follow me, you have to put yourself to the side. You have to put your flesh to the side. You have to ignore what your flesh wants. And you have to follow what the Spirit wills. You have to follow him. You have to put everything you want, all your hopes, dreams aside. Yeah, it's tough. It's hard. It's a struggle. We fight with that. That's why it's called flesh. We need to put those things to the side and say, God, what is it that you have for me? I can't do for myself what God wants to do in my life. None of us can. Jesus reveals here that we all have a cross. We all have a cross, and we have a choice concerning that cross. Jesus said, your cross needs to be picked up and carried as you follow him. It is impossible to follow Jesus without doing this. And why? Well, because the cross, outside of tradition and religious symbolism, the cross is a symbol of death. The cross is a symbol of death. In order to follow Jesus, in order to follow after God, and to uh, fully uh, gain what God has in store for our lives, the flesh must die. The flesh must die. And it has to submit to the Spirit. Flesh and spirit cannot coexist. They cannot be on the same pedestal. They cannot both give command. The scripture says you cannot serve two masters. No man can serve two masters. You, you'll either hate one and love the other or hate this one and love that one. You can't love two masters equally. We need to decide who am I going to follow? Who am I going to put as my master? Is it harder to pick up the cross, or is it harder to follow Jesus while carrying it? I found myself wondering that, uh, thinking about that question the other uh, other day, and the more I thought about it, the more it was an intriguing concept. Um, you know, is it harder to pick up the cross that God wants us to pick up? Is it harder for me to pick up my cross? Or is it harder for me to follow Jesus while carrying my cross? And the answer I came to was, it's harder to follow Jesus with your cross. And my reasoning for that is this. How often do we have opportunity to go to an altar, to approach God, after, during the service, or whenever, at any point in our life, how often have we gone to God in prayer, laid down, stood, knelt, or sat somewhere at an altar with tears streaming down our faces and uh, filled with an intense desire to change something or some things about our lives? 
How often do we feel the, go through that? How often do we uh, go uh, fit into that exact kind of situation? Constant. It's constant. It's easy to say, I need to change this, but it's harder to change that. Picking up your cross can be a challenge, sure. And we'll all agree on that. But how does it compare to carrying your cross? Well, let's see. The weight of your cross. The weight of your cross depends on how you live. The weight of your cross depends on many things. The things of this world will try to weigh you down. The more you entertain this world will impact how heavy that cross is. The things that you entertain yourself with, the things that you allow into your life will weigh that cross down and increasingly become a burden. They will add baggage to your life that God did not intend for to be in your life. It'll just keep adding and adding and adding until you get so weighed down that it's hard to even move an inch. God does not intend for us to live with baggage. We need to cast our cares upon Him, not ourselves. Sometimes as human beings, we want to fix things ourselves. But we need to learn to trust in Him and to say, Okay, God, I'm going to give it all to you. It's hard to turn and say, I know I can't take care of this. It's hard to do that sometimes, but we need to trust in God. Sin will wear you out and wear you down, but the promises of God will last forever. The promises of God last forever. The pleasures of sin are just a moment, but the promises of God are forever. You know, I... I'm blessed to have grown up in a church that preaches truth. And sometimes it confuses me or boggles my mind a little bit how people can be so content to live in the world, among the world, simply because it's comfortable. Simply because they can be comfortable. I don't understand it. Thankfully, you know, I, I don't want to understand that. John 19, 15, again, said, The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Look at that for a second. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. You know, we might just read over this portion of Scripture at the end of this verse. But let's look at this significance behind this real quick. The chief priests, the top of the religious leaders at that time, were willing to compromise their belief in God's sovereignty in order to get what they wanted in a moment. Think about that for a moment. They were willing to compromise their beliefs. They were willing to compromise everything they had been taught, everything they had learned, everything they read from the Word of God. Everything that the people before them that uh, experienced, they had the scrolls. They had the stories passed down generation to generation. They knew that God had brought their people out of Egypt and delivered them out of uh, the hand of the Egyptians and rolled back the seas, the uh, Red Sea, and they crossed on dry ground. They knew that God supplied manna in the desert and water when they had nothing to eat or drink. They knew the things of God that he, that the, um, they knew the things that God had done in the past, but they became comfortable in the age they lived in. They became comfortable in their surrounding. They became comfortable in the world. They were willing to compromise. Spiritual compromise will never end well. It will never end well. The more you compromise, the more you lose. The more you compromise, the more baggage that's added to your weight that you're carrying. You need to be careful about who you allow to speak into your life. 
You can't just go to anybody and say, hey, I need advice. You need to go to somebody who follows God, who gets on their knees every single day in prayer and says, God, what do you have in store for me today? What do you need me to do? What do you want me to do? We need to seek God before we seek men. When you put the things of God above everything else, everything else will just fall into place where it should go. Spiritual compromise never ends well. I can think of, you know, I think of Noah. Uh, not Noah, sorry, uh, Jonah. He was a prophet. He was a preacher. And God said, hey, go to this city, and I'm going to do something great. Go to this city, preach this. He, I mean, man, God spoke to Jonah and said, this is what I want you to preach, how I want you to preach it, and where and when, and all the details. And Jonah said, you're crazy, God. God, you're crazy. He was a preacher. He was a minister. He knew the things of God. But in a moment of doubt, he compromised on his own message. And in the end, it all worked out, and God still ended up moving on that city, on on Nineveh. But Jonah sure was uncomfortable for a while. If we ever have an issue with something in God's word, it's not that God's word is wrong. It's that it struck something in our, in our flesh. And we're saying, oh, hold up. This is, this is starting to get uncomfortable for me. That's when we need to dive into the word. That's not when we say, oh, uh, I'm not convicted about that thing. It doesn't apply to me. That's dangerous. When you start saying the word of God doesn't apply, the word of God applies to everything. That's why we have the Word of God, because it applies to our life. It's not there for us to go through and sort out and say, oh, I don't care about this. I'll take this. I don't like this. I don't think this applies to the day and age we live in. No, holiness is still essential. Living for God is still essential. Being separated from the world is still essential. Being dedicated to the things of God is still essential. It's still essential to go down and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It's still essential to be filled with the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. It's still essential to repent. It's still essential. You can't tell me it's not essential because it's in the Word. If we can't believe in the Word, why are we even living according to part of the Word? We can't just pick and choose. We have to accept the whole truth of God. The weight of our cross, it can be great. We can't just take some of the things of God and say, okay, I'll take that. I'll take the blessings. Uh, God, God, I'll take the miracle signs and wonders, but you can keep the other commandments for the other people. It doesn't work that way. When you honor the things of God, God will bless you. If carrying your cross wasn't important, Jesus would not have died on one. If, Jesus, if carrying your cross wasn't important, Jesus wouldn't have died on his. It was an instrument, it's a tool to show that we need to follow him. It might be hard, it's a, it's a struggle. The weight is great. But if you can just keep your eyes focused on Jesus and keep following after him, great is the reward that you will find in the end. We need to seek truth that will save us, not just not truth that just makes us comfortable. There's too many people in the world that are being told truths to make them comfortable instead of truth that will save them. There's too many uh, churches out there that are preaching truth just to make people comfortable instead of truth that will save them. And that kind of truth, the truth that will save us, 
That kind of truth will only be found in Jesus. It won't be found through anything that man can do. It'll be found in Jesus. This world can't offer it. This world can't supply it. This world can't say, hey, take this uh, special pill and you'll be all good and you'll make it to heaven. No, it takes day-to-day -day, um, dedication to the things of God. There's no easy way. It's just day after day following Jesus. John 8, 31 and 32 says then Jesus said then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him if ye continue in my word then ye are my disciples indeed and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free truth real truth will set you free real truth sets the captive free free from addiction free from fear there's a lot of fear in this world right now. There's a lot of confusion in this world right now. But if you want to be set free from that, all you got to do is find God. All you got to do is follow after God and apply the word to your life. And you got to say, God, I need you. I need you more than my entertainment. I need you more than my sports. I need you more than Hollywood. I need you more than my social media accounts. I need you more. I need you more than anything in this world, God. And if you start to pursue the things of God, God will work in your life as only he can. We need to seek the truth that changes us, not the truth that can, uh, not the truth that you can change. I've heard the question, what is truth? And I've also heard the answer, truth is uh, up to being defined by who's, up, it's able to be defined by anybody. But truth, if it's defined by all of us, is going to be different. If we all had to define truth, there would be some differences. How can truth be truth if it's not consistent? Truth is consistent, and the only thing that's consistent that I've found is Jesus. This world is inconsistent. The things of this world are inconsistent. But God, in the things of God, go back to Genesis 1. Through the whole creation account, it's consistent. And God spoke, and God said, let there be. And then he said, it is good. God is consistent. He is the God of truth. The past few months have been difficult for many people, but they have also been a great opportunity. Now, before you start questioning what, I just, what that means, let me go ahead and say this. Opportunity was given to us, is still being given to us, to look at our lives, to look, to reflect, to say, what am I doing? To make a difference. What am I doing in my walk with God? And it's given us time and opportunity to make changes. You see, even here in our church, we had to make changes to adapt to the situation we were uh, facing. We had to stream church services. Oh my goodness. I'm so thankful we're able to be here tonight. <laughs> uh, while we would be uh, going through the process of getting live streams and recordings done for services back in the past couple months, there'd be some people that would walk in and be like, man, all this goes into just doing one service? And we'd be like, yes, <laughs> that, lots of sleep and lots of coffee, mostly because we didn't have lots of sleep. But you adapt, you, you get into the change, you do what you need to do to pursue after the things of God, to follow after Jesus. You change things. You stop watching things. You stop playing things. You stop listening to things. You stop uh, allowing things into your life, influences in your life, so that you can follow after God, so that you can continue to carry your cross and follow after Him. We need to analyze 
how we spend our time, how we invest in our walk with God on days that aren't called Sunday. We're days that we don't go to church. We need to look at how we live day to day, how we interact, the words we use, the things we say, how we talk with people. We can't be praising God on Sunday and then gossiping about our coworkers on Monday morning. If we want to make a difference in somebody's life, we need to be different. God has called us out. Be ye separate. That means not entertaining the things of the world. That means not allowing those influences to speak through, uh, through us. We need to let God speak through us. We need to let God be the first and foremost in our lives. We can look into our lives all, all we want, and that's required in order to pick up our cross. To pick up our cross, we have to look at our life and say, okay, what do I need to change? What do I need to do different? But in order to carry our cross, we have to make a change. We have to make a change. We have to do something different. If you want to get closer to God, you need to remove things that you're close to from the world. That's the way it is. It's plain and simple. If you want to increase something, you have to decrease other things. Carrying your cross might drive you to your knees. The weight of your cross at times might be more than you can bear. Maybe the past couple months it's been more than you can bear. Maybe you don't know what's going on. Maybe, maybe all the confusion, all the fear, all the chaos. Uh, you don't know who, what, uh, who to believe. You don't know uh, what the politicians want to do. You don't know uh, how much of a, uh, who's driving what kind of um, You just don't know what people are doing. But if you read the word of God, you know what Jesus is doing. You know what Jesus is going to do. You see, there's going to be something that happens in this world very soon. Where people start looking other places than the world for truth. People are going to start looking to the churches. They're already doing it. People are looking to church for answers. They're saying, I can't find answers in my politicians. I can't find answers in uh, anywhere else in this world, but I can find answers in God. See, some people will scoff and say, oh, you're going to go to God. That's so typical. That, you know, that's it's typical. You, you know, they might mock. They might make fun. But, man... When you can share your testimony about what God has done for you, it's more than just a, a book you can read. It's something you can tell, an experience that you can share. Don't be afraid to tell people what God's done for you. Don't be afraid to say to tell people the mistakes you've made. But also, when you tell them about the mistakes... Tell them about the grace. Tell them about the mercy. Tell them about the love. I heard a few, about a month or two ago, I heard a, a little um, clip from a service, a church service, where the minister was talking to his congregation in a um, black community, and he said, we need to reach into our community. We need to be the driving force of change. We can't rely on Washington. We can't rely on our politicians. The church needs to be the change. He continued and he said, this generation that's living right now, this young generation, they don't know love. They don't know love. They've only been taught hate. They've only been taught the things of this world. They've only been taught how to look at somebody and judge them. But if the church can teach them to love, 
it will change an entire world. It will change the whole world. The church needs to be a force that drives change, that drives this truth into the world. And the only way that will happen is if we carry our cross. It can't happen if we just pick up our cross. But if we carry the cross, if we carry our cross, Brother Shane, if you carry your cross, Tyler, if you carry your cross, you can change somebody's life. You can make a difference in somebody's life if you carry your cross and follow after Jesus. Don't get distracted. Don't get discouraged. Yeah, you, you might invite thousands of people to church and nobody ever come, but those thousand people heard somebody extending an offer in love and care and grace and mercy. And it left a seed. It left a seed. What comes from carrying our cross? Let's turn to Matthew chapter 5 real quick. Matthew 5, verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 4, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Bless, verse 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Verse 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. But then verse 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Rejoice. And be exceeding glad, for great is your reward. If you carry your cross and follow Jesus, keep your eyes dialed in on him, and just follow after him and say, God, I'm going to follow you wherever you lead me. I might be uncomfortable. I might not know where you're going. But as long as I can see you, I know I am going to a place of promise. You see, this world likes to promise everything. But everything will fade. You can't take your money after you die. You can't. Uh, pastor, uh, pastor of the church I grew up in used to say, "You can't take your Ferrari to heaven if you have one." You also can't take your beat up junker. But the things on, on of this earth will stay on this earth. But if you Follow after God. Carry your cross and follow after Jesus. Great will be the reward. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. And I'm about to come to a close. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So what is the way of your cross? When you follow Jesus, you just read it. When you follow after Jesus, the weight of your cross 
gets lighter and lighter. The more you follow him, the deeper you go in your walk with him, the farther you follow him, the lighter that cross gets. He will give you rest if you're heavy laden. If you have a great burden, God will give you rest. Cast that care upon Jesus. He wants to take it. He wants to take those things that keep you up at night. He wants to take those things that afflict you. And he wants to take care of them. His yoke is easy. And his burden is light. Can we all stand tonight? As Jesus walked or stumbled on that road that day from the place where he was beaten, whipped, mocked, spit on, as he walked past person after person, the weight of that beam that he carried, the the piece of the cross that he carried, I'm sure the weight was great. But each step took all the effort he had. And at some point, he just couldn't continue going. So they compelled a man by the name of Simon. They told him to come. They made him come. He didn't have a choice. He didn't have an option to carry that cross that night, that day. But tonight, you have a choice to pick up that cross, sling it over your shoulder, and to carry it. You want to know how we'll make a change in this world? You want to know how we'll fill this church? You want to know how we'll reach into the communities and change people's lives? It's by allowing Jesus to get into those homes to change those lives. We can't change a single thing. But if we just allow ourselves to be used as instruments to reach into the homes and the communities, man, We can't even begin to imagine the things that God will do if we just make ourselves available, if we just surrender our will to Him and say, God, whatever it is, whatever it takes, I will follow you. The weight of my cross might be great. But the burden of eternity is greater. It might take a lot to carry your cross. But there's too many souls that have never even heard the name of Jesus. And some of them live right next door to you and me. We don't have to travel across the world to find them. They're right next door. They're in the desk across from the office. They're down the hall. They're at the booth, two booths over from us in the restaurants. They're the person that comes to us, can I take your order? It's the person in front of us in Walmart, the person behind us at the same place. There's people all around, and God is trying to shake a church and say, hey, it's time to be serious about your walk with me. It's time to take up your cross and follow after me. The weight of your cross might be great, but it's time to suffer through that weight. It's time to rely on me for, th- for the strength. Stop relying on yourself. I will give it to you if you just trust in me.
we can all bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Maybe you came into this place tonight and you've been dealing, struggling to even pick up the cross, your cross, or to carry your cross. Maybe you've been facing some doubt. Maybe you've been having a lot of fear going through your mind and in your life. Maybe you've just been stressed beyond belief. Let me reassure you with this. Jesus is here right now. We tell Jonathan every night before he goes, to, as he's going to bed, Jesus is everywhere we are. He's in our living room with mommy and daddy. He's in your bedroom with you. He is everywhere you will go. He will take care of everything you will ever need. He is always with you. And that gives that little boy peace to go lay in his bed in a dark room and fall asleep. I'm not telling you to fall asleep at the altar tonight, but I'm, what, what I'm telling you tonight is to come to a place, whether you want to stay in your seat or if you want to come to an altar and just be safe when you're doing that, that's fine. But find a place to pray and connect with God right now. Seek after the Lord right now. There might be some things you need to change before you leave this place tonight in order to pick up that cross. I'm reminded of the song. It says he's, he never promised that the cross would not be heavy. But he does promise that he will be with us through it all. He did promise he'll be with us through it all. It'll be hard, it'll be difficult at times, but if we just trust in Him and continue to follow after Him while carrying our cross, oh man, the things that He'll do. That's it, just go ahead and connect with the Lord right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just let Him work. Cast your cares upon him tonight. He will give you strength. He will help you. Trust him enough to lay everything down at the altar. Crucify the flesh and let the spirit lead you tonight. It's time to move beyond where you've been for so long and into a new place that God has pre had prepared for you for so long. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and seek him tonight. Jesus. Hallelujah.